Hello, this is Boreal with Black Education TV. I'm going to be talking about guidance. Right now we're living in a world that seems to be quite frightening. A lot is going on. A lot of people are afraid of the things that they see. They have no explanation for them. The world has been guided to the place that it is presently in right now. And all of us in some form or another are guided by something or many things or someone. And the world as we see it right now has been given into the hands of the wicked. And as the scripture says, evil men wax worse and worse. It's getting increasingly wicked. And it's going across every racial line. You see, and the reason I wanted to talk about guidance is because the generations that follow our generations and that we're the generations that followed our parents' generation and our parents are the generations that followed their parents, you see. But it seems as though with each generation, things get worse and worse. Evil people wax worse and worse. And things don't seem to be improving. One very common factor all around the world is disobedience. Many common factors, should I say. Disobedience, pride, and I'm going to use the term godlessness. People don't want to be led or guided in the way that they should go by the Most High. Men have established a way that they think is right for them, and they don't want anyone telling them anything different. And so therefore, as we go about our lives doing the things that pleases us and not really following any particular godly order, we go more and more into wickedness. That is what we see happening. And then... Going back to the scripture of training up a child in the way they should go. In the way they should go, that means that the parents are guiding them in the way that they should go. But most parents today are too afraid to guide their children. Don't care about what direction their children go. Or they're just simply lost themselves and don't know how to give direction. Because they were not guided. Or should I say, they were guided, but in the wrong direction. Because as stated before, you're being guided in some direction, whether it's right or wrong. The right direction or the wrong direction. And as we see children today growing up, it gets really frustrating when you see the direction that this next generation is going in. There's this utter disrespect there is no order anywhere in the schools, in the homes, and it's Bible prophecy being fulfilled. The scripture actually said that babes shall rule over them. And what we see right now is young people saying, look, this is the way we want to do things. We don't care what you adults have to say about it. This is what we want to do. And the parents are like, okay, do what you want to do. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. You see? Because parents don't even want the role that has been given to them. Now, you have some parents who um, pretend to be parents. And what I mean by that, their children live with them. They provide for them roof and shelter and clothes and food and all of that. But when it comes to structure, when it comes to training, that's where the parents kind of get themselves out of the equation. And they kind of let their children do whatever it is they want to do. We see a lot of that ha happening. And then, as the children venture off into wickedness, I mean, pure wickedness, the parents are dumbfounded, as if they have no idea how it happened. But that is the world we are living in, where there is no guide guidance. And parents are not training up the children in the way that they should go. Now, we know that is not true for every single person on the planet. I'm 
not talking about 7.6 billion people are living this way. When I speak, many times I'm thinking of a majority or a, a large number. I know that there are those of you who are training your children across every racial line, you see. And um, proper training of children has nothing to do with color or race. So when people try to say this particular race is better at this or that, and this particular race is wor worse and all of this, this, that's just a bunch of propaganda and mess that they talk. Be because I, there are Asian parents that are great parents. There are black parents, African parents, white parents, all kinds of parents that are great parents, you see. And then you have those that are rotten to the core who allow their children to just become whatever the world shapes them into, you see. And so now, when you look around and you try to figure out why are things getting worse, you have to understand the people that do certain things in this world that make it very uncomfortable to live in this place. Those that are committing the crimes, those who are um, doing the dirty dealings and all kinds of things, the wickedness, the hatred, the murder. That's because... In many cases, something that wasn't holy, or should I say set apart, had an influence in their lives, where they were not being guided. You, you got to wonder when there is a push by the powers that be to take away or strip away parental rights as, a, as it relates to what the children eat, as it relates to what they watch. How they, how they deal with their children, how they're raising them. Pa a lot of parents, because of the system, the way it's set up, they actually relinquish it, not knowing that they've done that. And one, th one way that they do that is to send them to the public school system. Right now, and I've talked about this before, the public school system is set up to where the teachers are afraid of the students. The students are afraid of the students. The students are afraid of the teachers. Everybody's in fear. You got gun training going on for teachers to carry weapons. And um, you have in Chicago, there are, there are students being trained on how to stop um, a blood, uh, I'm sorry, a gunshot victim from bleeding to death. Now, school is supposed to be a place of education, right? But now they've had to take it from history and math to um, how to survive a gunshot wound, you see. So that lets you know that the direction that this world has headed in has taken us from a place of innocence to a place of wickedness. I'm not saying that the world was ever innocent, but I'm referring to school when I say that, where once upon a time children did go to school to learn. And now what we have going on is fear survival. How do I survive a day at school without being stumped, without being shot, without being bullied? You have to ask yourself, what is going on in the United States to where our schools are vastly different than those in other countries? You've got to ask yourself that. There's a series out right now where they do these videos and they're comparing, they're saying this country versus America, that country versus America, on how they do various things, from the simplest things to the most complex things. They're comparing themselves because they're basically trying to shame this country and say, look, you think you are the, the righteous leaders of the world, but look at how you do things versus how we do things over here. You see, and so that whole mentality has passed around here in the U.S. to where you have um, seemingly wicked people. And I'm talking from the uh, top to the bottom, from, the, from the, the poor to the rich. You have seemingly, um, I'm going to call them self-righteous people who have established their own righteousness, who want to tell other people how they should run their countries or how they should raise their children and all of this. Wicked people trying to rule everyone. From the, from the least to the greatest. You see, trying to put forth their ideals on everyone. Now you can present an idea, but don't make it seem like if someone doesn't go in the path or the direction that you choose for them, that they have no other direction to go. 
you see. And that's what has happened here in this country. I think about the food, for instance. You have this whole food system that's set up, and they're telling you uh, that this is approved by us. This is what you eat. And what you've chosen to eat is not good for you. Some people actually believe this stuff. I'm ashamed to say that I used to be one of those that felt like the USDA approval was all I needed. There was even a time where we had our pecan tree just dropping pecans to the ground. And my silly self said that, uh, well, these haven't been tested. No one has tested them, so I don't want to eat them. Now, this is years ago, family. I'm just, just telling you where I was at that time, where my faith was. You see, because I didn't know any better. I was taught or guided, should I say, towards believing that the system was checking my food out to make sure it was okay for me to consume. Not realizing that they were a part of this whole conspiracy that we are living. We are all living in the middle of a conspiracy that is not really a conspiracy, but this stuff is unfolding right before our eyes. There is something wrong with the food, but we have been strategically guided towards the food that we eat. This food has been strategically placed before us and called food, in which some of it isn't even food. And then when you try to guide your children or train them up in the way that they should go, you have those telling you that you are wrong, that it's not right to guide your children. There's this thinking out right now that just really bothers me. And it goes like this. It says, let your children grow up to be what they want to be. Now, on the onset, that may sound like, well, what's wrong with that? Well, sometimes children need guidance. I look at some, some of the wealthiest families, and I'm going to give you an example so hopefully you can um, get where I'm coming from. Some of the wealthiest families, they started businesses um, a couple hundred years ago. A couple of hundred years ago. And it is still in the family today. And it wasn't that each child that was born into that family after each generation that they say, oh, I want to be the next um, owner of this jelly factory. You see, Smuckers, I'm thinking about Smuckers, because they say generations of goodness, right? But do you think every child in that family came out of the womb wanting to run that corporation? I'm pretty sure some of them had thoughts and ideas of other things they wanted to do. But their family guided them in the direction of keeping that family corporation going. They were guided. They saw the need. They saw the potential. They saw the benefit. And so their family, the Smuckers family, guided them in that direction. And it's not to say that it's wrong for children to go off and explore their dreams. But sometimes if a child has something that a parent knows is not realistic. Okay? I'm just going to I'm just going to pull something. I'm going to say being a basketball star. The chances of your child becoming a basketball star are very, very minimal. And if that's the only thing you allow them to explore, what's going to happen when they get 30, 40, 50, and that's all they've ever thought about, and they're still hoping? Now, we know there's those success stories to where it does happen from time to time. But for the most part, you owe it to your children. You owe it to them to give them proper guidance, especially if there doesn't seem to be the potential of them actually making it as a professional basketball or football player. Sometimes you have to guide your children towards realistic things. Now, I hope no one is misunderstanding me and saying that you can't allow your children to explore things. Sometimes children don't know what direction to go in. They have no clue and they need parental guidance. You see how they tell you parental guidance for watching a particular show because there may be some content in this movie that are not, that's not suitable for children? Well, that's what I'm talking about. If, if your child is headed towards the direction of something that is not feasible for them or something that may not um, work out for them, 
you see. Now, you can, t- you can just about tell if a child has really great potential in something. Because there's this certain thing that stands out. There's a certain reaction that everyone has. Say, for instance, if the child is an artist, you see. If the child is an artist, you have to understand there are millions of artists around the world. If they are just a really great artist, but they don't have anything that is any different than anyone else. While they're pursuing their dream as an artist, you as a parent need to guide them in the direction of something that they could fall back on if that plan does not work. And in other words, don't allow them to put all of their eggs in one basket. There's nothing wrong with parental guidance. If your child eats a certain way, say for instance, you give them, a, give them allowance and you tell them that they can just go and buy whatever they want. Is that wise as a parent? You give your child $20 every two weeks or something like that. Will you be a wise parent to allow that child to just go to the grocery store and just buy a bunch of junk, candy, pop, just junk? It would be wise as a parent to guide that that child. Tell them to save their money. If they are an artist, tell them to save their money so that they can buy themselves some art equipment. You understand what I'm saying? Guidance is needed in this world. Now, I, I use something very simple as childhood dreams and ambitions to show you that without guidance, our children can be derailed in their lives. That is what we see around us. When you look at the world around us, when you look in your own neighborhoods, you don't even have to look at the world. Just look at your own community, your own city, your own state, wherever you may be. Just look around you. When you see young people just living reckless lives they didn't get there by mistake someone allowed them to go in the way that they wanted to go instead of the way that they should go when you see a young person 18 19 years old smoking cigarettes somebody didn't put their foot down you see when you see a young person who gets a car and they're drag racing with their friends in the neighborhood Somebody ain't putting their foot down. Right now, we have a bunch of scared parents who don't want to be parents. Anybody can have a baby. Anybody can make a baby. But raising good children is not by mistake. Now, we do know there are exceptions to the rule. You have some children who were raised by parents, and it's a a wonder that they made it out alive. Some children say that I'm going to be the exact opposite of what my parents were. So you do have exceptions to the rule. But the point I'm trying to make is this. Raising good children is not by mistake. When you allow children to go in the way that they want to go instead of the way that they should go, you're going to have a world filled with lawless, ruthless, angry, wicked people. This is why you turn on the news, you turn on the internet, anything that you're turning on, you're seeing something tragic happening because someone is not being guided or in some cases not being allowed to guide their children because you have a system that people don't want to, they don't want to speak against. You have a system that is saying you can't do this, you can't raise your voice at your children because you don't want them to be afraid. But then next thing you know, when they're 15, 16, 17 years old and they're at the mall, someone calls the police. Who's raising their voice at them then? Who's tasing them then? I'm going to let that wind pass by before I continue. Such a beautiful day. But the same system that tells you that you can't raise your voice at them, their policy allows them to do what they tell you you can't do. You understand what I'm saying? So it is by design 
that parental control is being challenged every day. And because of this challenge, you have parents relinqu relinquishing control. They're letting the TV raise them, the movies, the school system, other students, anything but mom and dad. Mom and dad says, look, just go and get out of the house. Just come back by 9 o'clock. Be back by 11 o'clock. You don't know where they are and what they're doing. And when they bring all kinds of trouble to your door, it's always this shoulda, coulda, woulda. You see? And most people, they don't even want to hear. They don't even want to hear any solutions on how to guide their life and guide their family. They don't want to hear it. They've closed their ears to it. They feel like it's, it's no point in it. Some people actually despise instruction. Don't tell me how to raise my kids. Don't tell me what to do. But then you want all kinds of help when you're trying to rally to get them out of jail for something they're being, they're being accused for doing that they didn't do. You want all kinds of help then. Or when you're trying to get a protest going together because your child has lost their life in some senseless violence. Or that they've been wrongly killed by the system. So you see, family, people, we have got to start guiding our children a lot better than what we are. I know many times as parents, you just want them out of your face because you have your own troubles you're dealing with, but your children are your responsibility. So it is your job to guide them. It is your job to train them up in the way that they should go. Guidance will keep your children out of a lot of heartaches and pains, especially some of the things that you yourself have gone through. And you know that proper guidance probably would have had you take a different direction in your life. But when you are not properly guided, what you have is the world that you see before you. We have billions of people around the world who were led in the wrong direction. And so now we have all been thrust into utter chaos. So that's it, family. Either you guide them or you lose them. Losing don't always have to be in death either. They'll just be the next generation of lawless individuals living in this world and not contributing one thing to another person's life that's positive. Okay, family, I'm done with my walk for now, and I'm out.